What's good, Homo Squad? It's your boy, Homo Ziggy. We back here with another reaction, and today we got a death battle on our hands. We got Frieza versus Megatron, Dragon Ball versus Transformers. Now, I've been watching death battles and such on my separate time for the for a number of years, and I've been a and to be honest. And listen, and I'll be honest with y'all, I've watched it from other people and such, and I'll be honest, they be entertaining as hell, whether they doing animated characters, movie, well, anime versus movie characters or whatever, they be, they be entertaining as hell, cause in a way, for me personally, I get to know a little lore about certain characters or whatever and such, so, especially from, especially when it comes to like, any anime characters and such so it gives me a insight on how each character and how it all is and such and I gotta say with them, but when it comes down to the battle battles and such that they produce they be phenomenal work so original link to this will be in the description down below so make sure to go check it out but either way this gonna be a long one this is 21 minutes 42 seconds basically 22 minutes so information and a little bit of sponsorship I heard and all I out the battle so we better check this out make sure you like comment and subscribe follow me on my socials up there and without further ado let's get in the video this episode of death battle is sponsored by NordVPN and better health better strap yourself in because we're in for a long reaction Frieza the dread emperor from Dragon Ball and Megatron, the Decepticon commander from Transformers. When these two dictators collide, the cosmos will tremble. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. battle. Let's get it. Deep in the bowels of outer space lies a monster so cruel, so callous, so evil that the universe itself trembles at his approach. Behold, the mighty Lord Frieza. Oh, he's adorable with the horns and that floppy tail and the... <laughs> Genocide? Oh, awesome. And he's laughing. Cool. Frieza's diminutive stature and foe gentility were intentionally deceptive and rooted in a surprising place. In response to the Japanese economic bubble at the time, Frieza's design was meant to evoke real estate speculators. Series mangaka Akira Toriyama has described such speculators as the worst sort of people. Yes, really. I guess you could say Frieza is more than meets the eye. Oh, wait, shit, that's later. Much is unknown about Frieza's alien race and heritage, only that he and his father were born as mutants with abnormally high power levels. Oh, like how the doc said, my blood alcohol level was poor. Hello. So... As you see here with this information, so full name Lord Freezer, aka Freezer, Freezer, Refrigerator, <laughs> Age, Outlook. With with Dragon Ball, you don't know what their age age is and such. So the fact that this is saying greater than seventy or lesser than no, it's probably greater than seventy. <laughs> yeah, great. It gotta be greater than seventy. Seventy years height five two one. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Title Universal em Emperor Emperor Emperor. There we go. A mutant frost demon likes grape soda, freezer day, Yamcha. Why would he? I don't even go into it. Hates saying stuff animals in cooler. Damn. Why hate none your brother? Why hate none cooler? Point eight straight out the womb. Frieza was so crazy strong that unlike most Dragon Ball characters who transform to get stronger, Frieza transforms to get weaker. So he doesn't like accidentally nuke a planet, only intentionally. With his father's empire and army at his beck and call, Frieza would cross the universe, conquering worlds one by one and selling them to the highest bidder, just like real estate speculators. And if anyone objected, he'd just kill them, their entire family and everyone they ever knew. Just he like real estate speculators. While he usually lets his weird multicolored alien grunts do his dirty work for him, Frieza's not afraid to throw down himself, especially if some spiky haired space. Because most people think like just because he can't 
just because he might be small and immature, you think that he would just send... Yeah, he could send his army out there, but... Y'all be thinking, just because he's small and such, y'all think he won't destroy your planet? Think again, nigga. <laughs> These monkeys start getting too uppity for their own good. Frieza's strength comes from his innate understanding and manipulation of his own ki, or life energy, which he can use to enhance his physicality or manifest into projectile attacks. Like his classic death beam, death bowl, death wave, death cannon, death if saucers. Yeah, I'm, I'm sensing a theme here. Frieza can move Just mountains death. with his mind, <laughs> fire laser beams from his eyes, create ki force fields, and he even learned to sense the ki of others through sheer observation alone. He's fast enough to keep up with Goku's key attacks, which, scale to the key he absorbed for a spirit bomb against Kid Buu, could move across the universe in less than a minute. That would be over 17 quadrillion times the speed of light, and he's gotten even stronger and faster since then. You know you're a badass when you can stroll into Planet Vegeta, a planet filled with people whose only higher aspirations involve murder and hair gel, and talk shit like you own the place. And he got so paranoid about one of them getting strong enough to kick his ass that he blew up the friggin' planet. Considering Planet Vegeta has 10 times the gravity of Earth, this would mean it likely has 10 times the mass and 100 times the energy required to overcome its gravitational binding energy and destroy it. That's over 5.3 Yoda tons of TNT. And that was Jesus effing Christ. <laughs> in his weakest form. Too bad he kind of missed a spot. Or several because a bunch of Saiyans survived to fight another day. Space genocide just ain't what it used to be. This would come back to bite him when he was finally forced to confront the Earthbound Saiyan Kakarot. And accidentally ended up being the reason he turned into the legendary Super Saiyan. Like the albino dildo he is, Frieza has survived being... The what? <laughs> The albino, the, the what? The legendary me, Super the Saiyan. Albino like what? the albino dildo he is, Frieza has albino. survived being pounded by Broly for over a- Hey, yo, pause. <laughs> and this is what I'll be saying with Death Battle. They'll give you the information and such, but then they're throwing like little comedies here and there, like the albino dildo. <laughs> I'm dead. Like the albino dildo he is, Frieza has survived being pounded by Broly for over an hour straight, crushed by Goku's oh spirit bomb. Yeah. Now look, when I saw that, well, not, let me say not try to see, actually saw it, but when I, I see like little clips here and there, and I gotta say, and with all pauses when I say this, right, that nigga Broly, you want to say sexy red? He really took him to pound town. Um, and then split oh, in half, straight. consumed. Can you imagine getting freaking for a whole entire hour? Most fights don't even last like three or five minutes. This nigga boldly, this nigga boldly knocked his ass around for a whole entire hour. And whole entire 60 minutes. And he withstood that. Crazy. By an exploding planet and left to float in the vacuum of space. He can survive without the vast majority of his body, though unlike other Dragon Ball villains, he can't heal on his own. It didn't help him that much after he got his ass sent to hell, but because of that dragon and his balls, he was back at it again. And with just four months worth of training, the first time he'd ever trained in his entire life, Frieza was able to achieve a new transformation capable of surpassing the Super Saiyan. Golden Frieza. That's a level of laziness I aspire to, Wiz. DeviantArt Frieza here lets him keep up with Super Saiyan Blue Goku and Vegeta. A significantly weaker Super Saiyan God Goku could blow up the whole of Universe 7 in a punch clash with the God of Destruction, Beerus. And the shockwaves of their punches were able to reach the edges of existence in only a few seconds. Over 270 quadrillion times the speed of light. And that is before so many years of power-ups and training between then and now. Totally crazy. Crazy, but nothing compared to his newest and greatest form. A transformation capable of surpassing Goku's Ultra Instinct and Vegeta's Ultra Ego, their peaks at this point. A transformation even stronger than Gas, who was wished to be the strongest in the universe. He literally said F you to the Dragon Balls. This is Black Frieza. The all-seeing Oracle Fish had prophesied the coming of the universe's strongest. And perhaps he was talking about. And you know what's so crazy? Is the fact that this nigga free. This. I, 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 
it's even crazy to say that. That with the way how he's always been calling the Saiyans and such monkeys. Because let's face it, there was always these theories about how with way how Frieza was always calling them monkeys. Because it's saying about racism and such with the whole black people and whatnot. Look. He, the fact that he has that type of power now that he's Black Freezer, he, you know what? Let me not. <laughs> a Frieza all along. Come on, give us another prediction. Oh, yeah, where's I Think you're gonna die? No, for some godforsaken reason, he didn't use his newfound power to kill those pesky Saiyans. They were right there, you moron. In fact, he once committed the arch-villain's greatest sin and teamed up with them to save their universe and beat Jiren, a being comparable to the gods of destruction. Because no one's allowed to destroy the universe but him. And that's a promise he means to keep. This almighty emperor will continue to rule the universe with an iron grip and a heart of ice. Okay, these freezer. Let's go. Now we on to this episode of Death Battle is sponsored by NordVPN. It's no secret that Wi-Fi networks, especially free public ones, can be compromised by boy commercial. This is Megatron. In Cybertron's ancient past, the planet was ruled by the Autobots Functionist Religious Transform. Order, which decreed a Transformer's natural-born alternate mode to Now, let's read these information. So, full name, Megatron. I don't know what that says, because my... If y'all... Y'all not seeing it right now, but my little screen recording and such, the little task, the little screen bar and such for it, in real time, it's blocking it, so I can't really see it. But Megatron... Height 38 feet, no shit. <laughs> this tall as shit. Her age greater than 9,000 years old. I, well, who know? Who can tell how old a freaking transformer is? Whether bad or good, who can tell what how old these niggas are? Species Cybertronian, leader of the Decepticons, desperately needs a cough drop, damn, because. Cause he sounds like an old man. If you really hear how his voice sounds, it sounds, it sounds like nigga. <coughs> sound like he needs the he sounds like this and such. Likes Cybertron, poetry Optimus Prime. How can what? hates Autobots, capitalism Optimus Prime. Determine their role and status in society rather than letting them choose for themselves. Born into this repressive caste system, Megatron of Tarn dreamed of something more. So this giant Hasbro toy robot, only $5.99 at your nearest Rite Aid, wrote a manifesto on peaceful dissent that got popular with the oppressed Cybertronian working class. So much so, in fact, that the Senate tried to have him assassinated. Whoa, politics alert! After surviving that brush with death, it's Megatron was convinced that peace could never be an option. The only path left to overthrow the crippling social order was violent revolution. So were the Autobots originally the bad guys here? Optimus Prime? More like Optimus Crime. Never say that Megatron wasn't committed. The civil war he started between the two groups lasted nine million fucking years. And again, remember, Toy robots. He was aided in his war efforts by his immensely powerful fusion cannon, a giant laser bazooka that can hit targets from 12. Y'all better have watched. Y'all better be sticking throughout the entire end of this. Twelve miles away and level a small town in a me, single shot. You better These be projectiles the are so fast reaction. they're able to exit the atmosphere from ground level after only a single second by scaling the so distance. The arsenal he got are antimatter buzz saws. Fusion Cannon, Energon, Energon Mace, Energon Seal, Energon Sword, Electricity Manipulation, Flight, Panic Bubble, and Sonic Blast. And to be honest, with the way how it looks right now, even though he got like, he, so basically his whole thing is with electronics so basically that's the whole transformers things like with 
electronics, weapons and such. But the thing is, I feel like Frieza is gonna win cause he's literally a mutant. So, I don't know, let's see of the earth using the angle of this shot the fusion cannons I'm projectile must be moving over 4200 times you know the speed of villains, sound but, but like me the winning. fusion cannon needs a little time to I'm recharge between shots I'm so right megatron's now. got some tools to keep the job going he can close the distance with his energon mace and block blows with his energon shield it helps that Damn. megs literally fought as a gladiator before his stunt as a revolutionary megatron can fire lasers from his eyes and arms launch buzz saws strong enough to slice through solid rock fly through the air and open up a force field known as a so there's gonna so if anyhow in the action so like how with the buzz saw now if anyhow he tries to chop off Freezer's body and such if anyhow I see that I feel like that's gonna be to me right this is just me this is just off for first listen to me I feel like that's not gonna work because as you hear Freezer can literally survive even with half of his body chopped off so I don't know a panic bubble. Now it might seem like a huge flaw that it lets enemy combatants inside, but that's only until you realize it won't let them back out again. That's when the panic part comes in. Megatron's not trapped in there with you. You're trapped in there with him. Megatron's Cybertronian body is strong enough to match the Autobot leader Optimus Prime, who can toss around oil tankers weighing hundreds of thousands of tons. And Megatron's metallic hide was tough enough to survive an explosion so massive, it launched the entire planet of Cybertron through space. By taking a look at Cybertron's mass and how fast it was sent flying to get its overall kinetic energy, Megatron must have survived a blast equal to nearly 4.5 Nina tons of TNT, enough to annihilate a small star. He can even keep up with Decepticons like Starscream, who can fly across the galaxy from Earth to Cybertron at hundreds of thousands of times the speed of light. And he wouldn't be a Transformer without being able to transform into various vehicles. A tank, a stealth bomber jet, a and a gun! Just a gun. Walter B-38, in fact. I'm sorry, Wiz. I know he's this tragic revolutionary corrupted by the cycle of violence or whatever, but that is the funniest shit I have ever seen. What does he have, like, his deceptive buddies point him? Yeah, that sounds stupid. Like, you can transform into many vehicles, many weapons and such, and even with the weapons. You transform into a gun. You would. I don't know. people and fire? Sometimes. He can fire himself too. <laughs> oh my god. That looks even sillier. You may be yeah. laughing, but Megatron is no joke. By know, utilizing space bridge teleportation technology, to Megatron can establish a remote link up to a nearby can, black hole. Literally, as soon as when he transforms into a gun, I can literally have like a freaking like. If I'm like. If I'm Optimus Prime and I see this nigga transform into a gun, I'm literally taking the barrel of him and just simply destroying him right then and there. Because I don't care how much, I don't care if he is like a dictator and all that. Let's face it, the minute he transforms into a gun, I'm sorry, I won't even try to take you serious at that point. At that particular second, I'm not taking you serious. Because nigga, you could have transformed into anything else. But you transform into a gun. I don't know what y'all gonna say, but but Ziggy, you don't look here. Y'all need to tell me that as soon as when this man transform into a gun, right? Even if he can control himself, nigga, he's still a gun. Yeah. Look, in the world of how the cartoon or whatnot is, okay, maybe you get me there. But realistically. If somebody transforms into a gun, just like transforms into a gun, do you really think that you go that they're gonna be able to stop you and such as a gun? Hell no! I'm I'm literally just gonna the minute he tries to shoot a shot at me, I'm literally ducking and just grabbing that bitch before he even not even grabbing it. I'm literally gonna destroy it the minute he dis. The minute he turns into a gun, so I'm and sorry. And teleport the antimatter it produces to his location. Through his eyeballs! Should matter and antimatter meet, they will be mutually annihilated in a brilliant release of energy defined by E equals MC squared. It doesn't matter how durable the matter is, it will be destroyed at the subatomic level. 
As Megatron's war for control of Cybertron dragged on, all of his highfalutin ideals started to fall to the wayside. In essence, there used to be a point to the war. Now, war was the point. His only goal left was to rule Cybertron with a literal iron fist. That's where Megatron's greatest weapon came into play, his mind. The dude is a strategic and tactical genius who's always He's thinking 10 steps yeah, ahead. Right, He's fought powerful Transformers like Grimlock, Predaking, and the Decepticon, a being with the power of an entire evil universe behind it. He and Optimus have even fought Nova Prime and Regenesis Shockwave, both of whom could utilize the energy of that same universe. Megatron once sealed himself inside an Omniglobe and commanded a thousand real-life battles at once funneling every iota of relevant information Sorry, into his brain at the same Sorry, time. Bro. The sheer you know, deluge of data would be so incomprehensible for anyone without that supercomputer brain. But all that robot ass-kicking ended up as a draw, and the only true loser was Cybertron. With the planet in ruins and its civilization extinguished, the Cybertronian Golden Age was long over, and the vanguard of its destruction was Megatron who's now a crusty Saturday morning cartoon villain with a voice that sounds like he smokes 40 packs a day and a yeah, hate boner for his boneheaded second in command. Sometimes I feel that when it comes to cartoons now for certain movie things, like if you look at the movies and then when you see it transition into cartoons, nine times out of ten it ruins that like aura about a certain character, whether it's a superhero or villain. Like, you see in the movies and such where he looks badass as hell. No matter which one it is, they look badass as hell, right? But as soon as when they go into cartoon form, it don't have that same... It, I'm not saying all of it, but I'm saying certain ones, especially when it looks like this, right? That certain aura about them where it's just like menacing and such. To me, it will... It would honestly, if I'm like a fan of Megatron from like the movies, right? And I hear that they're going to put him into like the cartoon form. I'm telling you right now, if they don't have that specific aura about him, about that menacing type era, that uh, era, if you don't have that and they just make him look like a freaking silly villain than a real villain, I might as well go switch to somebody, I might as well go root for Arthur. If I'm a fan of you, and I don't, and it's not like I don't hate on the other guy, hate on the other people, but if I'm a fan of you, I'm expecting you to be like a badass, or so, right? And then when I see that when you go into a different form, no matter what it is, right? And you look weak as hell, I'm done. I might as well go root for Optimus Prime. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't care what you Star say. Scream. After countless millennia of a humiliating stalemate with his Boy Scout rival, Megatron's brilliant mind finally turned inward. He remembered that his early writings advocated for peaceful conversion and free thought instead of domination. It took you nine million years to remember why you started fighting in the first place? Would that memory get lost in the cloud? In what was possibly his most surprising tactical move yet, Megatron saved the universe from annihilation as an Autobot. What? He realized that after millions of years of indefinite war, the ideals that he fought for, freedom, justice, equality, had switched sides and Megatron had to as well. Turns out there was more to this supervillain than met the eye, because true to his nature, Megatron transformed. But um, we were all so this born nigga, to fight. So after all these years, we all him follow. Fighting and such, he decided to now this switch over. This episode of Death Battle is sponsored by BetterHelp. Have you ever felt like your very own brain is getting in your way? I'm not. Yeah. Make sure y'all go do those. All right, the combatants are set. Right, Run the data to, the to all now. possibilities. It's time for a death battle. Let's get it. Let's win. But before we go and get Cybertron, all right? Yes, it's 3D form. Cause they have a way of doing these battles in like 3D form or 2D form, or like 8 bits and such. So, so the way how this looks so far, this looks like it's 3D. So let's see. 
Greetings, noble warrior of oh, planet cyber three. whatever. E I, Lord Freezer, this claim I... this world as my own. Yeah, Cheer for me three. or face annihilation. I have fought for my planet for eons. I would rather see it turn to ash than reside in your filthy hands, organic scum. <laughs> I love it when they monologue back. <laughs> Pity. I'll have to construct a new mothership from your corpse. Why he switch already into the gold? Well, I won't say it's golden for him yet because he hasn't turned yellow. But after just one, after just like one like defense move, he switched straight up into the golden, the different form. What the hell? Pity. I'll have to construct a new mothership from your corpse. Just straight up. What's wrong? Is that clunky robot body too slow to keep up? Killing my witch can more than suffice, you blithering punks. Let me look. I know I put my. I know I put my. Per, I know I said I don't know. I want Freezer to win, but y'all let me know who y'all think is gonna win Freezer or Megatron. What's wrong? Is that clunky robot body slow to keep up? My wish and more than suffice, you blithering punks. <laughs> did say he was gonna he is a transformer you gotta remember that so of course he was gonna transform into a weapon or another vehicle but this nigga really transform into a tank huh and transform into a tank Playing for the legs. Shout out to Game Boy Jones for that man. <laughs> if y'all remember that song, leave a like in this video. This just always happen. I give it three, no, five minutes. My planet! Uh? <laughs> Behold the mighty Lord Freezer, ruler of a dying planet. My planet, 
Where is your army? Where is your ship? So powerful, and yet you will wander the depths of space for eternity. All because of me! What a fool. You despicable, cretinous worm! I'll torture you until your screams can be heard in the vacuum of space! Die a fool's death! <laughs> One thing's for sure, when it comes to certain villains, they vocabulary be on freaking point. Like, what did Frieza say? Die of... Despicable, die of, cretinous worm! You, you despicable, cretinous worm, like, nigga. I swear, when it comes to certain villains in a in like a whether it's like a anime, cartoon, or whatever, to me, and I know this is, might be my little thing here, but y'all vocab the vocabulary on these villains be not even on the level of like a freaking college based thing. Like nigga, what? Because <laughs> of me. What a fool. You despicable, cretinous worm! I'll torture you until your screams can be heard in the vacuum of space! Die a fool's death! <laughs> Stupid ad, why'd you- how you gonna ruin this for me? Let me go- I wanna see what happens. Well, I'm seeing what happened, but... Did he survive? <laughs> oh! You will die by my hand! See what I mean? What I told you. What I told you. If anyhow he was gonna cut her Frieza body in half, I told you. Frieza was gonna survive that. And what will happen? And I don't think he's gonna. And don't, didn't he say that? They, didn't they say that he needs somebody else to help rejuvenate? So yeah, it's game over. It's game. I'm telling you right now, it's game over. It's oh. got to. You will die by my hand. You fool! Let's see. This is all fail. Show me the KO. Show me the KO. Trillions must kill them all. Thank you. Wrong again, Frieza! It was what actually one minute and ten seconds! What I told I predicted that shit! I told y'all! Them idiots, but I Megatron's told ruthless resilience may have netted him a win in some scenarios, but Frieza's overwhelming power gave him a clear what end. Megatron's yeah, ace in the hole was his antimatter, which would have annihilated Frieza's ass no matter how dumb it was. And that was a real possibility. Megatron is a master tactician and manipulator with millions of years of combat experience. Frieza, on the other hand, has always relied on his raw power and intimidation to win fights. When things don't go his way, he has a tendency to freak out. However, Frieza has survived getting most of his body obliterated and kept saying. going. Which meant the antimatter wasn't a surefire win. It would have to completely cover Frieza's whole body before he could react. And Frieza was way too fast for that. While Megatron scaled to characters who could cross galaxies, Frieza has kept up with Goku, who should be at least trillions of times faster. And on his smaller size and key force fields, Frieza had more than enough ways to avoid, defend, or survive the antimatter. So Megatron's only option was power. While Megatron has survived planet-busting explosions, and even fought with a being that had the energy of a universe behind it, Golden Frieza was just too much for him, considering he certainly surpassed Goku and Beerus' punch class. Since Universe 7 as a whole should be over 13 times larger than our own universe, Frieza's super forms would far exceed Megatron's own power. And that feat happened at the beginning of Dragon Ball Super. <clears throat> Goku has gotten league stronger since then, and Black Frieza is currently beyond him. There was just no way Megatron was strong enough to keep up. Megatron was a devious foe, but Frieza's power, speed, and sheer survivability allowed him to crush the Decepticon leader you. underfoot. I guess you could say Megatron was cool, but Frieza was cooler. The winner is Frieza. What I told y'all. What I told y'all. Thanks for watching and Hey, shout out to Death Battles, man. Shout out to Death Battle. Sorry. 
But what I told y'all, I told y'all, I predicted it saying that if anyhow this nigga tries, if anyhow Megatron tries to want to cut Freezer's body in half, right? What I told y'all was going to happen. He wasn't going to able to do it because that was going to be fit. Because he li they literally said that Freezer could literally survive even without, even with half of his body. So I told y'all, man. Man, if y'all don't leave a like, hey. I told y'all that was going to, what I say, I told y'all I had Frieza winning, so for who voted on Megatron, y'all some suckers, <laughs> but either way, hopefully y'all enjoyed this throughout the entire end of this and such, hey, I might have to start reacting to these more, if this video, if this video does well, I might have to start reacting more to Death Battle and such, but either way, Y'all let me know what y'all thought about this down in the comments below. And if you made it to the end of this reaction, comment down below, Death Ball. Oh no, comment down below, Lakers. <laughs> comment down below, Lakers, and that makes me know you made it to the end and you're a real Humble Squad member. But, it's been your boy Humble Ziggy signing out. Check out my other reactions right here. Follow me on all my socials up there. We on the road to 2K, like I said. Stay positive. Keep the vibes up. Bango.